Okay, so yeah, first of all, thanks so much for jumping on a call. There has been some radio sil silence from Corona Y for a bit, and mostly because there was so much stuff happening that we got overwhelmed and kind of lost track of everything, mostly because we start ingesting ridiculous amounts of data into our dataverse. We start getting a ton of different projects, external projects and exciting projects, and we've uh, spiraled way out of the original Kaggle White House challenge. Uh, and even though we're still working with Kaggle, we're working on this literature review product ideation and scope, which is seems to be a real product and need, uh, mostly generated by you guys prompting all of these you know, meaningful discussions and, and uh, features and things that we discussed back in April or whatever, it feels like years ago. Yeah, yeah, but um, essentially things progressed. We established, we finally kind of crossed the chasm of technological infrastructure to support all of the things that uh, we discussed in a April. And ACAR, we started, sorry, but um, I'm just explaining, uh, I'm just explaining uh, the, the fact that we finally caught up with the technological issues and infrastructure to support all the meaningful features and requests that you guys generated in April. And the purpose of this call is primarily understanding your perspective of like your participation and utility of whatever we're planning to create. And I'll give a quick uh, kind of overview. The, the idea and the, the system that we're planning to build, it's essentially, um, AI powered literature review product. So something that ingests ridiculous amounts of uh, COVID-19 papers, uh, which I think had 150 scientific papers, 150,000 scientific papers by now, which is just impossible to read or annotate or do anything with those. And um, it gives a way an interface or something that can live on PubMed or any other places to figure out relevant structured information that pertains to all of these uh, scientific papers when it comes to a specific direction of research that researcher is interested in. So the idea here, and it's an ambitious vision, but we imagine researcher coming to PubMed or any other place and being able to uh, take the existing query that they input, be it like, what are the COVID-19 risk factors for people with Alzheimer's? And being able to not just find papers that are relevant by, you know, keyword search, but also things that they don't know exist. And uh, meaningful connections and meaningful relationships that pertain to that topic and direction of research. And by, by doing that, we reduce uncertainty of the operator of the system and give a, a meaningful way to connect the dots because it, there is no intention for us to figure out findings. It's purely for us to put the dots on the map and have you uh, connect those dots and produce some, some findings. Does it all make sense so far? Uh, or the, I think you're I muted. think I understand. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, um, I don't know. But do you want me to elaborate? Uh, does it make sense to others? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe others, Hong, uh, Alex, Kara. Yeah, well, for me, when I search some literature in PubMed, it's not yeah, it's not that much comfortable, but I'm already used to it. But I know that AI or some computer, they are super smarter than me. So, yeah, if there, if there is some improvement, that would be much better. For me, yeah, yeah. actually, PubMed is not that much comfortable. Yes. I would love to know which platforms are most comfortable. For example, uh, uh, I explained this in previous meeting, but I, uh, previous meeting here, but I was not that much clear, but... For example, uh, the title, I search some paper based on the title first. Mm -hmm. uh, but the title does not always include uh, important keyword. So 
Oh. Got it. So just existing platforms don't suffice for the way you operate with the data, right? And extract I didn't understand. What, could, could you say it again? I didn't understand what you're yeah, saying. So existing platforms like PubMed don't uh, have features that uh, work for you in terms of uh, navigating papers and finding relevant papers, right? So if I click the title and if I read the abstract, uh, I can um, get more information, but there are too many papers. So first I need to uh, select filter, yeah. a paper, yeah, filter it based on the title. But uh, for example, for example, a, a specific number, the name of a cell, let's call the cell as a A. A cell can produce some specific protein named B. And the phenomenon, the name of a phenomenon caused by uh, the protein from A cell is, for example, ra rainbow effect. But the title does not always contain at the three keywords that I mentioned, A cell and B protein and rainbow effect. They didn't always uh, include uh, this keyword uh, in a title, but for example, the title only contain uh, A cell and rainbow effect. But mm -hmm. I didn't know the concept of rainbow effect. Then I can just filter the paper, but uh, if AI can provide this three keyword, which so in the paper there is a abstract introduction and result and discussion part. So if I can uh, know, for example, if AI can produce this keyword was belongs to which uh, mm -hmm. part in the article, I can. Uh, I think it would be helpful. So if the name of the keyword is included in the result. It yeah. means uh, the researcher were, for example, introduction is like providing some background and research uh, result is about the data, about their data. And discussion is about some explanation, more detailed explanation or future research plan they contain in discussion. But if, uh, but if the keyword is only uh, belongs to introduction, I can just filter the paper because introduction is just provides some background. So it's not necessarily means this is scientist were focused on the, the word that is only in introduction because it is on for providing a background. But if the keyword, if the keyword is belong to the uh, wizard part, then I would click it because it means they did some experiment related with the uh, keyword directly. So where well, I'm not sure it is enough to yeah, be clear. Yeah, about. It's, it's perfect. I understood completely. And I actually understood that that's exactly kind of, it, it's possible. And I can already see us doing this. We just need to <clears throat> figure out a, a good uh, interface for, for you to do these things. And that, that's going to be uh, uh, way more, uh, way harder than creating AI, to be honest. So um, that's, that's the part of the challenge. But yeah, this, this makes perfect sense. Uh, so maybe I, I can also give you guys a snippet of what we have been working on in terms of those literature review tables, uh, because those are our primary, um, you know, a, a way to dissect knowledge and filter knowledge by certain topics and directions of research. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, can you see it now? Yeah. So we created this Corona Mad, um, you know, temporary thing, which holds 68 questions um, to different topics that medical researchers manually uh, curated. And uh, for example, uh, we can try some of your topics. Uh, Hong, can you give me yeah. some keyword virology stuff? Oh, I need to find some, let me see. I assume this adhesion to hydrophilic phobic surfaces is relevant, right? Or no? Or more like cell something. Mm. I'm just trying to figure out if there is something relevant 
Hmm. Well, maybe let's let's do cancer risks. It's as molecular as as we can get now. <laughs> Um, so maybe like a good way to explain to, uh, for me um, would be take one of these things and showcase. So this is the direction of research when it comes to risk factors um, uh, to people with cancer. And you can see that there are uh, different papers like role of drugs affecting renine and deotensine and aldosterone system. And so, uh, I can't read it, but you, you get it. Um, so then you, you can see all kinds of different columns, which don't make any sense to me, but I assume they make sense to you. And uh, the way these were created, it was actual uh, manual work of researchers and medical professionals reading the paper and creating these literature review tables. And um, the thing that we want to accomplish as the next step is actually figure out a way for AI to extract some of these from tabular data. So we're gonna take uh, a subset of uh, data set, which is only clinical trials data, uh, which you know the code base that we produced to do that was primarily to the help that you guys provided was uh, that uh, initial taxonomy, like types of papers. So we're now able to find just clinical trials with some um, marginal error. And, and we also produced a code base to find uh, a subset that have tabular data, which makes it easier for AI to extract all of these uh, quantitative uh, parameters or also qualitative, but the ones that are in tables. So we plan on creating um, a pipeline of uh, AI kind of bots that's, uh, that crawl uh, research papers, extract tabular data like p-values, and then present it to uh, researchers uh, to be able to fix and annotate things. So to give you an example, assuming someone uh, sees that this article, th this scientific paper was read by AI and it produced a p-value of um, 0 0.34, and you open the article and you see, hey, it's actually 3.4, not 0, uh, 0.34. And you can quickly uh, highlight it and correct it. And then it goes back to AI and it learns on the mistakes that it, it has done so that it's a continuous process of AI uh, figuring things that AI can and then humans telling AI where it, it errors. A couple of quick questions. So this was done manually? Yes. And the list of papers was chosen manually as well? Uh, uh, for this. Yes. Okay. All uh, right. So I guess if you're going to test an algorithm, you can test it on this data set and see if you get the same results. Yeah. So we're create this. This is our initial benchmark, and this is actually a Kaggle Round Two competition, and we're participating in that in terms of uh, creating AI that creates that from tabular data. But we want to go a step uh, further and actually build uh, a tool for for you guys to be able to jump in here and you know manually fix things because we're pretty sure that we can accomplish okay accuracy with extracting tabular data but when it comes to claims and some you know uh, natural language processing ai is quite stupid in terms of it 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 lacks causal inference and causal reasoning and it cannot understand some of the things that are very easy to understand to, you know, human brains, especially when it comes to like negation and, you know, things like in this study, we had 32 participants, but then we had 28 because something happened. And right. we want to be able to create an interface where you can uh, highlight things, fix it and teach AI on much more com complex uh, uh, functionalities. And that's also something that is really innovation in AI space alone, because um, just to give you a heads up, we're as an AI community and engineers, we're very limited to statistical representation of uh, data and that lacks meaning. And that's why uh, things we can 
it's impossible, even if Google has the most compute power ever, um, the current algorithms are still limited to statistical representation. And um, there is no way to, to truly create the, like the general in intelligence, uh, which everyone is, is trying to, to create for the past 20 years. So our attempt is to get as close as possible to providing some meaningful uh, representation of scientific papers. Meanwhile, also creating a, a fully traceable system where any of the researchers can see who produced that data, whether what was the log, like AI extracted this p-value, then you know um, Alex jumped in and fixed it correctly. Then uh, you know something else happened. Then it was showcased on PubMed, and thousand other researchers actually corrected it to some other value. And then you get the inspiring idea of Wikipedia for scientific research where millions of researchers can potentially crowdsource knowledge and derive knowledge from uh, both unstructured and structured data. I was just going to pipe in and mention that um, based on what you were saying before about it's an you know, AI literature search tool, I think that you'd be better served by really emphasizing the data extraction abilities because um, like for instance, PubMed, the way we usually search for papers, they, it just changed. It changed its algorithm, it changed its whole look, and scientists were very upset. <laughs> like this was, people are very mad about it. And I think part of the reason they're mad is they felt like PubMed was straightforward. They knew it was gonna give them a list of papers that matched in order of the year it was made. And they just liked that sort of straightforwardness and then they could tailor it based on keywords, right? So scientists are already very comfortable with that sort of like Boolean search terms, right? And so if you give them something, a new way to search I feel like there will be some suspicion, particularly if you don't tell them it, the power of it, right? This power to extract, which I think is really what sets it apart. So I was just going to mention that that's something that's really worth emphasizing when you're, you know, displaying it to the world. That's super helpful. And mostly because we have a suspicion that uh, researchers are very skeptical of, you know, AI functionality they, because they, they will be, I think. <laughs> yeah, they cannot understand how it produces the results, which is, again, another big idea that is funded by DARPAs and other governmental agencies in terms of explainable AI and being able to actually see why the result was produced by this black box. And uh, yeah, we're, we also have a team that is working on that, but I'm not sure we'll be able to produce anything meaningful. But to the very minimum, we can provide a, a log, like a stack trace of like, what actually happened. That's great. I don't know if I would be incredibly concerned about that. I mean, like, I guess, I don't know, I, don't, I doubt I speak for everyone, but for me, like if it works reliably, if I don't understand what it's doing under the hood, that doesn't bother me that much. I think the reason will, people will be skeptical is because it, as you've mentioned, it will make mistakes, right? You know, like some of the tabular values are going to be wrong or are gonna, it's gonna pull the wrong value out of the study. And I think that's probably what will concern people. One thing I would recommend if you do have a kind of system where people can correct things that the AI has come up with is that you, is that, uh, it's indicated whether something was uh, determined by AI or has been validated yeah. by a human yet. That's great. And in terms of like, imagine you being an operator of this system. Um, what level of granularity do you imagine in terms of this representation? Like if, if you would imagine an interface, uh, Alex, uh, like how, what would be the perfect interface for it? It's a tough one. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much, you know, that I would, for something I'm interested in, I, uh, you know, if I'm interested in, you cut it, off. sorry, I press the mute button. If I'm interested in, uh, you know, the effect of cancer on coronavirus or whatever, I put it in a search bar and papers come up in order of uh, some combination of relevance and importance of the work. And uh, all there's a table like the one displayed with all of the important data from these papers, and I can filter by kind of paper. Okay, and kind of paper being the types that we've uh, figured out, right? 
yeah, that, that would work nicely, you know, where you can check and uncheck various types based on what you want to see. Cool. Because, uh, yeah, one of the things we're trying to automate right now is the uh, pipelines to recreate these kind of collections, you know. Here's a collection of clinical trials. Here's, here's a, connect, a collection of clinical trials that only have tabular data. Here's a collection of clinical trials that have tabular data and talks about protein A or uh, something that Hong is interested. I would recommend not eliminating papers that the AI failed to collect tabular data from because you don't want to accidentally eliminate papers that are harder for it to read but contain useful information. You know, I think if I, the most important thing to me is that I see the most relevant and important papers. Yeah. And, you know, if, if the tabular data is nice, but like if some of the sections are blank for some of the papers, it won't be the end of the world. Yeah, makes sense. And in terms of the, um, let's imagine that, um, let me share back the, the screen because, and I know Olya only has five minutes, so maybe we let her uh, jump in real quick was, was this thing. Because the first time we had a call, Olya mentioned that tables were primary mode of operation for her. And I would be interested to understand how um, you actually, like which columns would you think be relevant to your direction of research? Because as you can see, there are so many columns and I keep seeing them increasing and increasing, but obviously you as a human being are not interested in all of them because of your direction of research. And there is only a subset of these columns that would be interesting to you. Do, do you I know can I can I mention something? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it is super annoying when I want to find some specific types of paper, but I just wanted to filter the clinical uh, paper. But there are so many clinical pa papers, so that was annoying. So if you can uh, ca categorize that, that would be super useful. But also the other thing is, I always wanted to know about virology research. Uh, to mimic the virus infection, the infectious virus particle can be used to infect cell, cell line, for example. So if I infect the virus, infectious virus particle, it can mimic the entire life cycle of virus. So virus can enter the cell and virus can replicate inside the cell. And infectious virus particle were made from infected cell and then it will uh, budding from the cell and it can uh, spread neighboring cell. So it, so there is a system, it, it is one of the system to study virology. And the other thing is uh, some pseudovirus particle, it can mimic only virus entry step. So once the, so about most commonly used the system is renti virus backbone and they, in rentivirus backbone, for example, COVID-19, some, some protein that are Those spike um, proteins that have been to Yeah, resistance. yeah, yeah, yeah. So virus surface protein can be expressed on rentivirus backbone. And then if they use pseudovirus particle was infected to the cell, it can mimic entry step, but it cannot be replicate or it cannot be infectious other virus particle. And also the other thing is replicon system. So the cell, once the cell, the virus particle was entered the cell, it can replicate, but it cannot make infectious virus particle. So sometimes I wanted to know, but the title cannot specify from the title of the paper, I cannot uh, know which system they use. Like math. So do they use? Pardon? Like this method, like epitope analysis, peripheral, like flow symmetry. Yeah, yeah. It it is more specified method. Yes. So, is this the type of stuff you would be interested in? Mm. Yeah, I think it belongs to method, the specific method. Okay, so yeah. from what it sounds like, each direction of research, let's say virology has its own specific columns, neuroscience has its own specific columns, 
um, like, I don't know, myelin or something, neuron, uh, something interactions. And then, you know, uh, epigenesis uh, are interested in gene type of columns or stuff like that, right? That, is that a safe assumption? Mm, yeah, I would say that it's similar, similar, I think, yeah. Yeah, but, I would say that probably it depends on what kind of research you do. You will have different things. So, you know, one idea is to go in more detail, like the yeah, more categories, detail yeah, yeah. the categories that we created, that we wrote out, we could go even farther and farther, you yeah. know. But uh, I, I have been searching myself for something for my research uh, when I see the specific deformation of the cell. And I was curious to find out more. And I used all kinds of platforms to search. And I'm telling you that every time I discover something new by going to a different platform and combination, and it just makes me feel like, but a lot of that knowledge, sometimes I have to come back and I have to learn something new from a new connection. Mm -hmm. So the, not, not, I have never had the, uh, an instance probably where I searched for this without knowing this connection previously. Yeah. So I see an extreme value in having at least some connection, some new connection added to what I didn't know previously. Yeah, um, kind of, uh, you mean uh, ability to navigate this connections map of yours, like saving stuff and then coming back to it or? So for example, I search for this specific thing and apparently it happens in many different types of diseases like cancer, okay. neurodegeneration, progeria, aging, blah, 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 you name it, uh, cardio, uh, cardiac so degeneration. Ontologies that you're not aware of existing, but are extremely right. relevant to you after you understand yes. what those are. Yes. Okay, well, th this is great. We, we call this, um, you know, type of uh, platform or whatever we are so ambitious to create, a discovery engine, something that helps you find things you don't know exist primarily because when you go to Google, if you would like to find information about sport cars, you need to understand that such thing exists as a concept. If you don't know that exists, the only way to stumble upon it, if someone tells you, Hey, you should check out sport cars or you stumble upon it on forums or like car lovers forums or things like that. And that's why search engines by default don't satisfy our uh, innate need when operating in extremely uncertain environments such as COVID-19. Does it make sense? Yeah, I'm actually wondering about the structure of how that would be revealed. So in the example you're showing with tabulated data, that would all, re that would all require, you know, defined search terms that you input and then it would take those search terms and find appropriate papers. But for the example that Olia and, and you're discussing, I mean, you know, I know about in language processing, you build trees and relationships between words. And so is that, is that visible? Like, could, is, would there be a way to actually visualize that association tree to actually make these sort of discoveries? Very good question. So there is a concept of knowledge graph, which is something that many companies and Google have uh, been working on, which is uh, a form of a graph structure that maps relationships and um, you know, there are certain things that we can visualize to showcase, uh, let me open the image, uh, visualize these relationships like, you know, Dublin is a, a capital city or part of, and obviously this requires some understanding of underlying ontologies and meaning, um, and we're limited in that with the current, uh, you know, level of innovation that happens in natural language processing, but I feel like we're able to, you know, visualize at least something to some extent. I mean, I think that if you were able to show, like, especially from the perspective of how do you get scientists to engage with this platform? If you were able to show an example where you said, I mean, you know, here's the, you know, here's the ontology of the word you're looking for and here are all its connections. I think that would be really powerful. And I think that's what would like draw people to it because it would uncover certain relationships that are not otherwise visible. That would be cool. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, we, we operated on the assumption that it's gonna be powerful, but hearing this is amazing. 
Cool. Yeah, um, uh, yeah go ahead. You were asking about the tables, uh, what kind of columns you want to see. I mean, you, you showed us some of the clinical tables, you know, so of course there are some numbers there, but if somebody's working on the genetics of COVID, they will be interested in specific mutations and genes that are mutated in the, uh, you know, either in the receptors or um, in the uh, immune system, you know, so it really depends on the area, I feel like. But yeah. for me, when I, you know, when I kind of annotate my papers, I, I usually write out some, you know, some key information that I find. I have a link to the paper. Um, but I think you said that's one of the limitations to, you know, to process that language, right? This is something yeah. that AI can't do yet. But I really like the suggestion of Chiara to have this, if you have this association, for example, if you Google two terms because you know them, but it shows you actually much more and you're like, wow, I didn't know this has the association with those things as well. Yeah, and I, I guess, again, we're also fighting the, the fact that we don't know the functionality and interface uh, that may exist. You know, there are infinite uh, ways to build this user interface. But I think uh, the thing that I've discovered during this call so far is the fact that there is a very specific angle of direction of research that reduces the uncertainty about all the possible columns that exist for Hong or for Kara or for Alex or for you, Olya. And it's a matter of us giving you visibility of those and you selecting, you know, oh yeah, I need like gene sequencing method or, oh, I need something, protein, something. And then you fine tune. And if you're liking something, you're, you'll add an extra column and request, hey, I would like to see, you know, gene sequencing method for all of these papers and boom, under 24 hours, AI or humans uh, actually fill this up. I mean, it feels like magic, and uh, hopefully we're, we're able to accomplish that. This sounds awesome. I have to log off for now, guys, but um, I will catch you soon. No problem. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I think we've actually accomplished everything that uh, we could for the current scope of the work. Uh, essentially, every time that we speak, we generate a lot of like technological stuff for, for us to process and actually, you know, come back to, uh, to you guys. Um, unless you guys have some questions or suggestions, uh, I would wrap this up, but yeah, go ahead. Um, one suggestion, just cause I feel like I threw that out there and I realized it's a very different interface than the one that you're presenting is um, you could still maybe have those relationships listed in a tabular form. Like if you have an option to say, use this search term to show me relationships, you could still like sort of tabulate it in a list with some sort mm -hmm. of score, like nearness score yeah. or something. And so even just like scrolling, and you know, it doesn't have to be some fancy like interactive tree, but scrolling through a list of, uh, a tree would be cool, but yeah. cause then you can see like how the nodes relate, but even just like some sort of nearness score of words. And it, you know, some of those words might surprise you. That could be really useful. and maybe my impression is that that would be easier as a user interface. I don't know. In a way, I agree. Anton? I actually would definitely like piggyback on, on this comment. We're definitely not limiting ourselves with just like tables. Mm -hmm. It just like right now for like some other project as well, we found it's easier to start like thread really slowly and tables is something that scientists like, you know, used to look for and not really pushing back anything. But we definitely, like all of the concepts we were discussing today and last time, they all kind of could be described as like just simply uh, like interfacing with knowledge graph, right? And just like traversing the, again, it's not exactly a tree, right? But it's again, like nodes in the graph and making as Arthur started this conversation, it's extremely hard to find a really good interface to do that. So please, like again, throw your suggestion in, like what you would like to see. Because I think everybody has that graph, build mental graph of knowledge, right? Yeah. But then since we all interact with it differently, that's why it's extremely hard, right? Mm -hmm. For example, like nobody wants to add yet another tab of our tool to add another level of complexity to build your mental uh, knowledge graph. 
at, at the same time, we can't, like, we're not powerful enough to build it to, re to replace all of the tools you were guys using before, right? So mm -hmm. that's why it's, it, like, this will be the hardest part. All of this knowledge, graph links, building, etc. We have so many awesome people within CoronaY already working and outside of CoronaY collaboration as well. So we're pretty sure we'll have those links all like, you know, constructed by machines. But now we need to kind of how to bring them back to, to humans. That will be like in the hard part. So all of this mm -hmm. conversation are extremely beneficial for us to move in, in that direction. Great. Yeah. And in terms of, uh, would you guys be willing to participate in this first uh, round of like annotations that pertain to your area of research? Just again, no pressure. And I know everyone's busy, but if we throw a couple of tables at you and uh, that are relevant to just, you know, highlight and, and read the paper and see if, if there's something wrong with it. Yeah, I could do that. Um, let me see what, do you have a list of all the areas? Is that, oh, that's on the website we were just on, right? Uh, the, yeah, yeah. So you can go to coronamad.org. Yeah, okay, I've got the table. Okay, so there's 68 questions. Yeah, you can export them all if, if you want, or you can go into each one individually. Oh, okay. Got it. Are you still adding more questions to this list, by the way? Uh, so it's currently done by uh, 100 medical professionals, which I don't think all of them are active but there is a way to add to it. It's just, it's very um, unorganized because it's extremely decentralized. And that's also something we want to solve because even for Corona Y and uh, we built this uh, nice uh, visualization to showcase that we're actually global. Um, you know, from thousand people, we only have 500 that had uh, locations filled in, but you can see there's so many people in different time zones that it's impossible to efficiently collaborate. And like we also did the CORD-19 affiliations map, uh, which is visualizing uh, where pi papers are, are coming from uh, by locations. And as you can imagine, yeah, they're coming from everywhere. But having people uh -huh. like researchers and medical professionals annotate tables is also one of the big crowdsourcing problems. Do, do you want to add tables that you have to this? Uh, I don't know if I have a table straight up. The one thing is, I guess what I've been working on recently is uh, strategies to uh, decontaminate uh, uh, N95 masks. Uh, and I don't see anything about that here. Yeah, I mean, it's only 68 uh, questions. Yeah. But so if you have, uh, yeah, if you have papers that you've uh, extracted data from, Let's connect. I think you're on Slack, right? Let's connect. And uh, actually, can you send me another link to Slack? Yep. I will. Thanks so much. Um, you can, uh, we can actually create a separate channel and figure out how to uh, take the knowledge that you've created and fill it into the tables. Because we, we actually built a, a, a way to copy paste Excel and paste on the web, a website for a specific question. So I assume it will work for you, but let, let's see if it does. Right. So here, oh, when I click link, it doesn't give me, it is not connected, am I? Did I missing something? If I click link here right next to the title, I cannot connect. I'm oh, not connected. I see. Well. It's actually DOI number, but it's, Okay, I got it. Thanks for, for this. Well, we have to fix this uh, because it has a link and uh -huh. has DOI. So essentially, I, I assume you can uh, copy. Why did I, I cannot see DOI as well? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That's a quick bug, but... Um, and did you, I might miss the information, but did you uh, classify this, uh, all the paper manually? 
there is some so, hypertension or uh, actually those were a mix of uh, AI functionalities on uh, Kaggle so kind of crowdsourced uh, I can't find this paper by DOI but yeah it was a mix of um, of automatic extractions and uh, yeah, if you search by DOI, you're able to find it. Yeah, it we'll fix this, so you'll be able to okay. click on the link. That's just, uh, you know, realities of fast uh, iterative uh, web development, things break. Okay, I think we're good then. Let's uh, connect Alex on the topic of mask stuff and uh, potential tables. Kara, if you have any potential tables or something? I, I don't. I actually was going to say I'm a little, um, like, I'm, I feel like this is not my area of expertise. I mean, I could, I could certainly try to annotate, you know, certain areas, but it is actually pretty far removed from my scientific expertise. <laughs> so I'm yeah. happy to help if you assign me something I can sort of try, but I would rather um, it be crowdsourced from experts in that cool. particular subfield is my Makes feeling. Makes sense. Unless we'll stumble upon very interesting neuroscience questions. Oh yeah, if you find anything about neurons or sensory neurons, let me know. <laughs> I'm all okay. over that. Perfect. Yeah, my, my main area of scientific expertise is also not relevant to this very much, but, uh, you know. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, and Hong, uh, your expertise yeah. is very relevant to this, so I assume you already have some um, papers and, and tables. Regarding COVID-19? Yeah. Uh, not really. I didn't make a table, but... I know that there's a lot of publication nowadays. Okay, so probably yeah. it would be good for us to reconnect sometime next week. Hopefully we have something more to show and then we'll, we can ideate how to involve you guys a, a little bit more. Sounds good? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for, for a call today. Very exciting. Every, every time we have a call, I'm even more excited because it all makes way more sense. And when you're sitting in a basement and just, you know, coding and doing stuff, you question the utility and usefulness many, many times, but hearing validation helps a lot. Great. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone.